In this video, we are going to build the first proper template for Kirby. In the last video, we created the content for a made up agency site, pretty traditional with a list of projects, a team page, a blog, contact page. So something that could be easily transferred to any portfolio of a photographer or a company or anything like that. And we started with the plane kit. So the plane kit doesn't come with anything useful at all in terms of templating or design, CSS, etc. So you have to bring your own stuff. And that is intentional because we really don't want to force you into a certain direction or give you any kind of fluff that you have to remove before you can really start with your own stuff. So in this case, we only had a look at the content folder closely so far. And as a next step, we are going to check out the site folder a bit more closely because this is where the templates live. And if you have a look at the templates folder in the plane kit, you can see that there is just a default PHP template. That default PHP template is there because Kirby somehow needs to know how to fall back when there's no other template for the current page type available. So it basically loads this right now for every page that we created. No matter if it's the projects page or the team page or the blog page, everything is served from this default PHP template. And in this template, we only have a headline, uh, a H1, with uh, some with which is um, containing the title of the current page. So this is what you can see here. This part of this little PHP code is taking the title of each individual page that we created in our content folder and displays that instead of some static text that wouldn't be dynamic. It doesn't have any HTML document around it, and that is on purpose. It really is supposed to be as simple as possible and should show you that this needs to be replaced. So if we check out the source code of what we see here, you can see that Everything that we saw in the template a second ago is what comes out in the browser. So there's nothing that Kirby creates around this. A template is responsible for the entire document that is being sent to the browser. And when we move to different pages, we can see that the PHP code in that template page title replaces the page title properly, properly in the headline. So the first step in this template would be to make it like a proper HTML document, right? Because so far as it's just a, yeah, it's a, it's a very minimized version that you shouldn't really start with. So we're going to create our HTML document. I'm not going to go into details about all the parts of each HTML. You should really check out the MDN docs um, from Mozilla or CSS tricks or other great resources that are out there to learn HTML if you are not really comfortable with HTML so far. Otherwise, you should just follow along and then I guess you're still going to learn it step by step. So now we have the same thing just wrapped into a proper HTML document. Um, and you can see when we move back to our browser, now we have the proper document here. So as I said before, you have full control in the template um, of how what, what is being sent to the browser. And that is quite important in my opinion. It, there is no magic going on in the background. So the dynamic page title is also already great um, and it works like this. So you have the page object and that page object always contains the information of the current page we are on. So if we are on projects, it contains the, the information about that page or if we are on team, it contains the uh, information about that page. And information means you can access all the, the fields that you've created in the text files for each individual page, but there are also additional methods like the URL to that page or a list of all the images that are stored for that page or the other files that are stored for that page and a lot of um, additional helpful methods that you can use. So you should really check out the documentation for the page object to get more um, insight into what you can do with the page object. In this case, we are really just accessing the title and putting it into an H1 and that's all we are doing. 
What you can see is that the title of the document is still static and we also want to replace that with the title that we've entered into our site.txt. So remember from the content folder um, video that um, by putting text files into each individual page, we can store information for that page, but we can also store global information for the entire site in the site.txt. The document title would be a perfect example. So we can put our agency name up here and then we can use that. And we can use it in the very same way that we did down there for the page title. In this case, we, we use the site object though. So the site object is the second important object in a template that you can use to get the site URL, which is the main URL, basically leads back to the, to the home page. And then you can also access all the fields that are in the site text here, but there are also other methods that you can use and we will see um, one more in a second. So now we have a dynamic part up here and we have a dynamic part up here and they are perfectly linked with our content folder. So this is really cool. Let's go back to our source code that ends up in the browser and you can see the agency name is now being placed in our title tag here in the head. So I would say achievement unlocked. As a next step, this still looks like really shitty, right? Um, so I um, want to put a bit more information about our homepage here. So let's just say we want to put some additional text on our homepage or maybe on any other page. It doesn't really matter. Um, so in addition to the headline, we want to have some more text that could appear on any page. Um, and we can do that by referring to another field that we call text. Um, let's open up the home page. And you can see uh, you can see there is already some text coming up here in the home page. Um, this is something I filled in before. So you can see here now in the home.txt that I created a text field there, which has that text which appears on the home page. If we move on to the about page, for example, oh, we didn't create a about page. I mean, I meant the team page. You see there is no text coming up here because the team.txt does not have such text. There is no text field. Kirby doesn't break now. It, it's not complaining any, about anything. It just doesn't display that text. And that is really useful because this way we can have fields or not have fields without breaking the site. It just doesn't render anything. And this is, this is quite useful. Cool. So now we have the option to create more texts for each individual, each individual page. And of course, we could also add more fields and use them or not use them in our default PHP template. The next step would be that we somehow want this to, to look a bit nicer, right? So now what we can do is we can create a traditional um, link tag to a CSS file. How, would, how you would do it in any other front-end project, in any other framework, CSS, what, uh, CMS or whatever you're using. Uh, and Kirby has a helper for that. And we call that helper CSS. So you can write the CSS method like this. And now you can link any CSS file that you've stored in your project. And I already prepared that in this assets folder up here. So there's the folder called assets and I created a subfolder called CSS. And in there is a little CSS file that just take, makes sure that the, the result looks a bit more usable. And we can link to that by entering a relative path to that text file like this or like this. It basically starts from the document root and then you enter the path like this. And what's cool about this is it's not just creating the link tag for you or the link element for you. It also makes sure that this URL is always absolute and it's always correct. So that's quite a useful feature of the CSS helper method. So by do doing this, we add a bit more style to it. Still not very spectacular, but you can, you can see where this gets. And from now on, we can extend our template further and make it a bit more shiny. 
As a next step, we have no way to navigate around so far, and this is quite yeah, sad because so far it's quite a, a collection of useless um, pages that are only accessible via URL. Um, and this is not this is not so cool. So the first thing I would normally do in a project is I would probably create a header element if I can type. And within that I would create a logo. And for this demo, I'm using a simple uh, link tag with a logo class. And as you can see here for the href, I'm using the site object again and from that site object I'm using the URL method and that gives me the absolute URL to the home page and that is in my opinion super useful because no matter um, how where your site is located if it's on your local machine or on your server or on your staging environment that URL will always be correct and it will also always be absolute so you don't really have to worry about breaking URLs like this. And because the client didn't send us the SVG file for the logo yet, we are going to use the site title that we used up here in the document uh, again for the logo so far as a placeholder, uh, just to make sure that we have something that we can see there. Cool, so now we have a logo. And if I move to some of one of the sub pages, we can now at least move back to the home page. Not very spectacular so far but we are getting there as a next step we need a we need some navigation right so we need a menu and let's call it menu and then i would use a list and within that list i would have links and so now i could go on and create those links manually so type projects here, duplicate that, create one for the team, one for the blog, one for the contact. Uh, but that's not really how it works, right? I, I mean, we want to be sure that this list extends whenever we create new main pages and that um, the client is also able to sort those pages if they prefer to have the team first or the blog first. Um, so this should be dynamic as well. So instead of doing this manually, we will be using a PHP for each loop, which looks like this. And we place this part inside here. So for each loop means it takes a collection of something, a collection of pages in this case, and it will loop through those pages. And for every page, it will create the code that is between the loop or in between, yeah, in the middle of the loop. So how do we get a collection of the pages that we've created? We already have pages that would be perfect for our main menu here. So how do we get them in there? We start at our site object again. And the site object has a method called children that gives us a collection of the first level of pages in our content folder. So basically all of those here. So we take that and we call each item in the loop item. And then we can use this item variable to work with each individual page item in the collection and create dynamic navigation in here. So what we are doing first is each item now is a page object again. So it's the same thing that we use down here. So the item now has a URL method again, and it also has access to all the fields that we've created in the text files. So there is a title for every page that we have here, and we are going to use that for our menu. And now we should have a nice list of menu items that comes from, from what we've created here in the content folder. So let's have a look at this. Yay, it works. So this is exactly what I was planning to do, except there is kind of stuff included that shouldn't be in the menu. Um, but as you can see, the sorting is already correct. So we've added sorting numbers to our folder names in the last video, and they had um, exactly this purpose of making sure that projects comes first and the team comes second, and it's not just sorted alphabetically. So this works fine and it's great. And the unsorted ones are just appended um, at, the, at the end. So this is, this is cool. 
but we want to exclude those. The error page and the home page don't really need to be in the menu. So we need to, need to find a way to get them out of this list somehow. So let's see. Um, we have the children here and in Kirby what we can do is we can create chains. That means we have um, this collection of children and we can now do things with this collection of children. And one of the things that we can do is we can filter that collection. Um, and we can filter them, for example, by their state. Um, well, you could call it state. I mean, um, by the fact if they have a sorting number or if they don't have a sorting number. So they though are those have a sorting number, those don't have a sorting number, and we can use this simple fact to filter out the ones that we don't want to have in the main menu. And we call the ones that have a sorting number listed items, and we call them that don't have a sorting number unlisted items. Um, yeah. This is just how it is. So we can now create this method listed and add it to the children uh, chain. And by doing that, we filter our children. And now we should achieve what we want to achieve. We have a menu that doesn't include the home page and that doesn't include the error page. So that's quite nice. So let's give that a try. Of course, we could also do unlisted instead. And then we would achieve the opposite, which doesn't make any sense. But just to show you how it works. Oops. Um, so by doing this, we can filter filter this list of pages. So this works nicely, and we can now check if this actually works um, when we extend the list. So let's say we go to our content folder and we create a new folder and we call it uh, what could we do? I mean, philosophy or something. Yeah, let's just make a philosophy page. Why not? Philosophy. So we have a new philosophy page and the agency wants to tell about everyone uh, how great their work philosophy is. Um, so we reload it and the philosophy page instantly turns up in the menu. It doesn't have a text file yet, so it doesn't have a proper title yet. Kirby still takes the folder name as the title, but it works and we could sort it. And as soon as we add the change the sorting numbers, move it up, it will move up. Okay, we do, could do this proper, more properly, but you get the idea. So now this is extendable. Um, of course, this also works as soon as clients use the admin interface to administrate this list of um, pages and yeah, goal achieved. We add a bit more of HTML to our document to make it complete. So we wrap this in a main attribute, uh, in a main element with a class attribute called main, just to give it a bit more styling. And now we can have a footer here and create a typical Twitter link just for the to reuse the site object again. Follow us on Twitter. And now you get the idea of the Twitter handle that we added to the site TXT. Okay, so we have a yeah, quite complete example of how such a template could look like. We have a footer, a header, um, we have a link to, to our Twitter profile, we could inst add Instagram there, we could add some nice icons there. Um, we have a main menu working, we can jump to the different pages. Um, yeah, it looks quite nice. We loaded some styles to it. Um, I think you can already see how easy it is to create such complete documents, um, how easy it would be to add more to each page, how easy it would be to add uh, to use all uh, additional fields that you create to um, in those in this in this uh, in the text files. And this is what it's all about. As a next step in the next video, we are going to have a look at how to clean this up and prepare this entire document for our next step, which would be to create a second template, a specific template for our projects list, for example, or for our team page. If we don't want to reuse the default template again, but have a new template for more control over the design of other pages. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.